Hello everyone, Oyster Mushroom Expert here. Today we continue to consider the topic of the causes of the death of Primordia. In the last video I showed a diagram and said that a combination of several unfavorable factors causes the death of Primordia. I want to note that this voice simply reads my texts, which I write myself. I do not use artificial intelligence, only my experience and observations. Today we will look at why the primordia become wet, dry out, and turn yellow. And why don't the primordia go to the second flush? Here is the diagram. All variants of death of primordia are characterized by the absence of optimal microclimatic conditions during incubation and the initial stages of cultivation, as well as fluctuations in temperature and humidity. There will be a separate video about horse racing. When I publish it, I'll post a link here in the description. The microclimate is very important at the time of mushroom formation. Mushrooms that have grown, with a diameter of 2 to 3 centimeters, may not respond to climate change at all. And small white pins suffocate from condensation or get wet and die. If the primordia have formed beautiful and large, but then there is one significant jump in temperature and humidity, they, as a rule, die. If you don't have a humidity and temperature logger, you may not see this jump. The power may have gone out. And when all systems turned on again, the controller gave a command to increase the humidity. Or the outside temperature dropped sharply, and cold air came out of the air ducts because the water in the heat exchanger was not hot enough. At the same time, small mushrooms are covered with a film of water, condensation. That is, even one sharp jump in temperature or humidity can kill primordia. Let's look at the diagram. Why do primordia dry out? 1. Low substrate humidity after treatment. Primordia may die due to low substrate humidity. If the substrate humidity is 64 to 65 percent, the mycelium can grow, but uses all available moisture to form primordia, and without moisture, the mushrooms cannot absorb nutrients, feeding on the nutrient solution. Therefore, there will be a lot of small mushrooms, but in the future they will die. Moisture content must be checked in each batch, even if you did not change anything when processing the substrate. The raw materials may be different or their moisture content may change. Or some other factor will influence. If you check the humidity and find that it is unusually low, you will begin to wonder what might have happened. And you will find your mistake. If you don't measure the humidity, you'll probably only know it's low when the substrate turns white because the holes in the substrate will be dark and dry. During this time, you will have time to make several more batches of the substrate, and it may also turn out to be dry. Therefore, you need to check the humidity every time. What to do if you find that the humidity of the substrate is low after it has been processed? Unfortunately, there is little that can be done. If you usually keep the humidity in your incubator low, your insufficiently moist substrate will dry out even more. Therefore, raise the air humidity in the incubator at least for this batch of dry substrate. At least up to 75%. Although, it is better to raise it to 80 or 83%. Next I will say more about the humidity in the incubator. Many mushroom growers ask two questions. The first question is whether it is possible to add water to the substrate by spraying it from a spray bottle on the table where the substrate is mixed with the mycelium. I've never done this, but I don't think it will help. The fact is that the mycelium needs internal moisture, which is saturated with the substrate material, that is, husks, straw, or hay. During the process of soaking in water, the substrate absorbs water inside, like a sponge. If you spray water on the finished substrate, it will remain outside. However, you can try this. Perhaps gradually this water will also be absorbed into the substrate. It is important to remember two things. First, be sure to spray the water and not pour it. And the smaller the drop, the better. And secondly, it is advisable to boil the water for spraying in order to destroy microorganism spores and cool it to 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. Warm water is better absorbed. 
How to determine the amount of water? Let's say the substrate humidity is 64%. To put it simply, to raise the humidity to 67% you need to add 3% water. For 100 kilograms of substrate this is 3 liters of water. That is, you need to add 300 milliliters of water to each 10 kilogram bag. You spray water over the table, mix the substrate, and only then add grain spawn. I recommend keeping the substrate humidity at 67 to 69 percent. However, if you have 66 percent humidity, I don't recommend spraying. You need to mark such a batch, and if it does not give a second flush, just take it outside. There you can experiment, for example, adding water to the center of the block, which I will discuss below. It practically never happens that the humidity is lower than 64%. But, if this happens to you, water should be sprayed in two doses. First, you spray 200 milliliters for every 10 kilograms of substrate, mix and cover the substrate with clean plastic wrap. After an hour, you stir it again and see if there are no puddles on the table and the water has been absorbed, then spray another 200 milliliters. And after mixing, add spawn and mix everything together again. The first time I recommend doing this with one half of the bags. Do not add water to the second half of the bags. You need to sign both parties and watch how they overgrow, what happens to the primordia, and how the mushrooms grow. Then you can decide whether it's worth adding water at all. The second question I hear from mushroom growers. Is it possible to add water to a block that is already overgrown? This idea seems untenable to me. However, there are mushroom growers who claim that in this way they saved primordia on a dry substrate. You can try this. Pour water into the center of the block. Some mushroom growers write that they used a large syringe for rinsing with a capacity of 200 milliliters. You can also take a syringe for technical fluids. The syringe must have a hard nose so that it can penetrate the substrate. Other people said that they take a small tube about 1 cm in diameter and about 20 cm long and sharpen its edge. Then hammer this tube into the substrate and slowly pour 300 to 400 milliliters of water. You can try the same thing on those blocks that do not want to produce a second harvest. However, I repeat again, I have no personal experience. I am retelling to you the stories of mushroom growers I know and what I read on the Ukrainian Mushroom Growers Forum, which has the domain vishenka.com.ua. Here is a photo from this forum, the mushroom grower claims that these are the same bag with a difference of several days. We will look at the remaining rows of the table in the next video. It will be the final one on this topic and on this table. That's all for today, bye everyone.